What's up, everybody? James Duggan here. Joining me is Brandon Tyrell. Hello. We're going to be unboxing the BlizzCon 2018 goodie bag. That's right. Which straight is a away, box. Is a box, yes. <laughs> a Haradra cube with oh. lots of goodies. Oh, okay, Deckard. Uh, Fair enough. So just like last year, uh, the goodie bag will be given to you if you have a ticket to BlizzCon or you purchase, uh, you go online and purchase the uh, the goodie bag online. Yes, uh, if you have a virtual ticket, you get $10 off of that That's purchase, right. but it is a separate purchase for anybody who's not attending. And I think it's worth noting that this does not come with those awesome in-game kind of DLC pieces that we see every single year that I think are kind of the core value of the virtual ticket yeah. in addition to the streams. That's right. All that good stuff. Those are all tied to the ticket, your Diablo pets, Overwatch items, stuff like that. But let's get into it. Let's do it. In the front. In the front. Yeah. All right, here we go. You ready? <laughs> oh. All right. Oh, that's nice. It is nice. Oh, there's a, oh, straight away. Look at this. The BlizzCon book. It's the goodie book. A uh, celebration of our community. We'll find out what's in there later. Because <laughs> books... I'm not going to say books are lame. Books are great. Okay, cool. So this comes with uh, just a piece of paper telling you sort of what comes, what each item is, you know, and where it comes from in the in the Blizzard universe. But uh, right off the bat, you want to you wanna just grab a Actually, first piece? Yeah, you before we even up? do that, I kind of I want to show folks that uh, the thing that I think is taking up the most visual space or the, the most fidelity in here, I feel like is this classic Diablo vinyl statue. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to get into that right away because I think we have some speculation on that front. So let's go over some of the, uh, maybe not lesser items, but the- uh, Different items. Different items, exactly. Good save. Okay. Let's get rid of this. Yep. And I'll get rid of this. Second layer of plastic, we'll remove that. Um, very nice presentation straight away. Uh, we basically have two coins here. Well, three coins, I guess. One is uh, a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. um, I think we should start with Heroes of the Storm, because that game doesn't get nearly enough love <laughs> on IGN or anywhere else. Uh, this is the, the Ravencrest coin, which yeah. is in the Cursed Hollow map. Mm -hmm. This is something you battle over, and this is actually a magnet. It oh, looks, cool. looks metallic, but it's plastic. Yeah, I would bite it, but it's not. It's yeah. not metal. It also doesn't flip very well. <laughs> uh, but I bet that would flip really well. Number two, uh, actually it's not going to, oh, is dang. the uh, 20th anniversary <laughs> StarCraft coin. On here it says 20 year anniversary, 1998 to 2018, for obvious reasons. If you flip it over on the back, it's got the Blizzard logo, and then it's also got, um, whoo, it's also got some sharp bits, so careful when you when you grab that. Sharp bits, setting. All right, I want a coin that I can flip. It's gotta be this thing. So this is the, the Overwatch Challenge. Uh, coin, which says, live with honor, die with glory. Wow, that makes a really good sound it when does. you flip it. It flips really nice. I like that really good. Uh, so I don't know that this is, uh, I don't know that we can really speculate much on here. On the sheet, it's called the Overwatch Challenge Coin. Mm -hmm. uh, and I talked with some folks who are actively playing Overwatch, I have not played for quite a long time. And they didn't really seem to think anything of it. And frankly, it kind of just looks like a nice piece of desk swag, swag yeah. I think. Uh, next up is the World of Warcraft faction keychain. There's really nothing else to say about that. It's, uh, it says, on one side, champion, of the, champion of the Alliance or enemy of the... You can basically, I believe, wear it on whichever Oh, that's cool. So you can, you can swap way. it so the enemy faction is on the enemy side. There you go. There you go. Oh, oh man, it's stiff. It's real stiff. Uh, you, gotta, you gotta break it in. Or maybe do it the other direction. I'm not sure. Well, you're I doing know. that. I'm going to take way. a look at but this. But wow. you can turn that around. That's cool. Okay, we're going to save that book for last. Cool. All right, let's get into, uh, we, we have some Hearthstone. Magnets. Magnets. This is a uh, Oops, which replaced Sorry. That was a um, that was a big controversial change in Hearthstone. They really nerfed the ability for you to kind of DM your yeah, opponent. Say now. Sorry. sorry. All right, sorry. tell us what sorry. this is. This is definitely the thing. So this is sort of the, like you were saying, the thing that takes up the most space. And the Lord of Terror is really in there. This is a uh, Diablo vinyl statue. Yes. Now, what's interesting about this? Uh, what's interesting about this is it's classic Diablo. This yep. is not Diablo 2 or Diablo 3 Diablo. Diablo 2, Diablo does not have this kind of bracer on and all of his horns are black. He's also a little bit more uh, bestial. He's a little bit more kind of hunched over. Uh, all fours. Right. And yeah. then Diablo 3, Diablo, spoilers, is a woman, if you haven't played that game yet. Well, it's womanish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very female-ish. It's female-esque. Uh, so this Diablo is classic Diablo, and what's very strange about this, I think, is uh, last year, the big Diablo announcement, in addition to the Necromancer, was uh, the, the Darkening, Darkening of, Tristram. of Tristram, which was sort of a Diablo 1 event that was, uh, it was all rendered in the Diablo 3 engine, but then they threw this cool filter on to make it look like it was 
from way back in the day when you know Diablo 1 came out. Right, and this is significant because you got to play the Switch version. In that version, they altered the Diablo fight in Act 3, in Diablo 3, to have this model in it. That's right. So there's something going on. I, I, but I'm not sure that this necessarily ties into it. Uh, this, to me, would make a lot of sense to put in the goodie bag last year. Because when we, we have that uh, 20th anniversary, we have that Darkening of Tristram event, we have that Diablo 1 in Diablo 3. But now, um, I mean, the Diablo... Twitter account tweeted out that there are multiple projects in the works. One of those we can assume was Diablo 3 for Switch. That's right. So what do you think the other is? Um, the other one, <clears throat> look, we all assume <laughs> Diablo 4 is in development. <laughs> I don't think it's announced this year. I think really? what it is, we also know that there is a new Diablo comic uh, coming out around the time of BlizzCon. Um, so, so all signs are pointing to Diablo announcements at BlizzCon. Obviously, sometimes it's something small, but this seems like it's going to be something sizable. Mm. If, I, if I was a Benton man, Sure. Uh, I would put money on the fact we are going to get some sort of Diablo 2, maybe not a remaster, but some maybe a Diablo 2 event similar to Darkening of Tristram in Diablo 3, um, or something up thereabouts with Diablo 2. I am going to bet in the opposite direction, which is we will get Diablo 4 announced at BlizzCon 2018. I think, so. I think that it's been uh, a long enough time since there's been a significant installment. Um, in 2012, Blizz Blizzard skipped BlizzCon, or maybe it was 2013. I think it was 2012. But they skipped BlizzCon because they didn't have sufficient announcements. And having gone consecutively for the past three years, I feel like the announcements have been really cool, but they haven't been to the caliber that I would expect at a BlizzCon. I really want to see Diablo 4 announced. I think it needs to be announced. I think ARPGs are in a really weird spot right now. Right. And Diablo 3, I jump back in there for season 14. Yeah. It's a little bit played out. It's fun. They have theme seasons, but it is kind of played out. And I don't know that I'd be that excited about Diablo 2 and the way that they remastered you know, Diablo 1. Well, we know there's a new, tor a new Torchlight coming out, so like right. ARPGs are sort of making the resurgence. But again, you know, speculation with a grain of salt uh, exactly. a couple of years ago in the goodie bag itself. There was a Diablo themed dice set, and the D4 was oh, smaller than the that. rest of it. <laughs> and one of the sides was technically incorrect where the number should be, so there was a lot of speculation about D4, Diablo 4. Turned out not to be the case. So, again, everything with a grain of salt. But finally, yes, uh, so let's end the with goodie this book. Bag. That, uh, it's the goodie book, but that's not what it's actually called. It's called the goodie book on here, which I think is funny. Uh, <laughs> the BlizzCon book, a celebration of our community, 2018. Um, there's some really cool stuff in here. I mean, I think any Blizzard art book is just going to kind of blow your mind visually. Uh, we have a forward by Mike Morheim, I believe. Yep. Uh, and then we get into some wonderful artistry. Now, this looks to just be kind of a chronicling of BlizzCon from uh, kind of a visual standpoint. I imagine there are gonna be some community excerpts in here, some cosplaying, Blizzcon some event the layouts. We got the, the Illidan statue, which I believe. I've taken so many Legion. pictures of that statue. I know. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, yeah, so you know, BlizzCon is this huge event every year, and Blizzard has one of the best communities on the planet. Um, so if you're into sort of everything that comprises that community through Diablo Warcraft, um, you know, StarCraft, all of their properties, um, this looks like a good place to find some sweet nostalgia for that. So you have historically done our, our BlizzCon goodie bag unboxings. I have. How would you rate this one relative to what we got in previous years? I've been more impressed in the past. Um, you know, there was the 10th anniversary that came with that cool mug. Oh yeah, um, that mug was cool. Having said that, some years it's like an inflatable weapon and all that. Uh, outside of, outside of, you know, the, the really cool like set piece stuff, like that mug and, and the stuff you don't find very often. Um, I like it. It's it's. You know, if you if you get the goodie bag, it's because you're a big Blizzard fan. You're going to BlizzCon or you're buying it online, and um, these are some cool little mementos for you to keep on your desk or you know wear a pin with pride on your bag or your jacket or something. So all in all, um, with the art book itself, I like this one. I totally agree with you. I think uh, I think depending upon the franchise that you're most into, there's different value for your, you here. I think if you're a Diablo fan, this one's. It's pretty cool. uh, almost non-negotiable. It's very cool. This is a small statue, but the fidelity on this is fantastic. I'm totally putting this on my desk. The Overwatch coin is very cool. The rest of the stuff I could kind of take or leave, but for the most part, I enjoy what I see. Uh, again, Blizzard gifted us this. The magnets. How do they nice. work? <laughs> How do they work? We should ask some clowns. Uh, so you can purchase this, um, but of course, to get the in-game stuff, which I think is what I'm certainly most interested sure. in, you want to tune in to an Overwatch stream on September 12th. They will be announcing the in-game item, and I assume that the other items will follow closely after. Brandon, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, for all things Blizzard, you're already in the right place at IGN.